Paul is saying, I've been struck down but never destroyed. Why? Always caring about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus Christ. That the death of Jesus always manifested in my body. For we live, for who we, we who live are always delivered to death for Jesus' sake. That the life of Jesus may be manifested in our mortal flesh. So then death is working in us, but life in you. And since we have the same spirit of faith, according to what is written, I believe and therefore I spoke. We also believe and therefore speak, knowing that he raised up the Lord Jesus. He who raised up the Lord Jesus will also raise us up with Jesus and present us with you. For all these things and for your sakes, the grace having spread through the many may cause thanksgiving to abound to the glory of God. Therefore, we don't lose heart. Therefore, for that reason, for the reasons I just stated, that's why we don't lose heart. I'm under pressure, but I don't lose heart. Why? I understand the reason for the pressure. Even though our outward man is perishing, yet the inward man's being renewed day by day. Even though this earthen vessel is rickety and crickety. <laughs> y'all, some of y'all old enough to know what rickety and crickety is. You know, when you, when you got to pace yourself to stand up, that's rickety and crickety. When you stand up too quickly and you, whoa, feel like the room's spinning, you're about to lose your balance, a little rickety and crickety. You know, when you got the bed in phases, that's rickety and crickety. It's like first stage one, wake up. <laughs> Step two, sit up slowly. <laughs> Step three, turn your body towards the side of the bed. Do not get out. Step four, put one leg out. Test your balance. <laughs> Step five, put the other leg out. Stand for a minute. Don't walk yet. Breathe. <sighs> Attempt to walk. <laughs> That's your outward man. You know, some of y'all are younger right now and be like, you ain't gonna never get to that. Oh, yes, you will. Your outward man is perishing. Listen, right now, I know everything is in place. Gravity is undefeated. Anything that's high, God says, lo, I shall be with you always. <laughs> so anything that's high going to come low. Gravity going to happen to the best of you. And listen, right now, young lady, everything's all, okay, gravity. Man of God, your chest is up here now. It ain't going to stay up there. Your chest will be in your stomach. Just give it time. <laughs> Gravity. <laughs> Some of y'all are like, that's what happened, be happening to the men? <laughs> yeah, that's when they, we start looking pregnant. <laughs> so, my outward man is perishing, but my inward man is being renewed day by day for our light affliction, which is but for a moment. This pressure that's yet for a moment is working for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. So this pressure has a purpose. It says why we don't look at the things which are seen. The things which you're not seeing, the things which you're seeing are temporary. The things which you're not seeing are eternal. So I can't be focused on what's causing me the pressure, TJ. I can be focused on what God's trying to produce by the pressure. What? What is God trying to produce? I pass. I don't know what He's trying to produce. Well, you can look around your community of which you now are a part of, and see your shepherd and your apostle and others that have come before you and understand that you are part of the same DNA strain. Right. So therefore, you don't have to question what you're going to look like. Listen, you know, if you want to know what you're going to look like in the natural, look at your mama and your daddy and your grandma and your grandpa. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I wonder what I'm going to look like when I'm 40 and 50. You don't have to wonder. <laughs> you ain't got to wonder. Look at your family. That's you. 
that's you. You'd be like, I don't, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't look like them. Okay, their DNA is in your DNA pool is comprised of their DNA. And so once you get to certain ages, you start looking like people that you didn't think you was going to look like. But the DNA said all along, yes, you were. So you want to know what you're going to look like spiritually? Look at the spiritual DNA from which you come from. Amen. Some of y'all are like, I don't know if I'm a part of the family. We adopted you in. So let me give you these quick four C's. Quickly, 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 quickly. So diamonds got four C's, make it valuable. So as kingdom believers, you got four C's. That's key to your journey. Okay? Everybody ready? Amen. Your first C is call. Amen. Romans 8, 28 says, we know all things work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purpose. His purpose. So you got to understand that you're not here just to have church, but you've been called in the kingdom of such a time as this. Right. So what makes you valuable is you understand that you've been called here. This is not random. God didn't make no accident. This was no oops. No matter how you got here and who you met and who shared their, their faith with you and gave you an invitation card or if you found us online, don't matter. It's because you were called to be here and you were called to, to be a part of the kingdom for such a time as this. You, you, know, you're, you know, you weren't born in the 1800s. You were born in the 1900s or some of y'all in this room, the 2000s. For the 9-9 and the 2000s. <laughs> so, you were meant to be a part of God's kingdom for such a time as, as this. I, you know, I question sometimes. I was like, man, it seemed like it was easier back in the day, Ashlyn. Like, you know, I wish I could have been back in the heyday of the church where everybody went to church. Take me back to the blue law days where everything was shut down on Sunday. So everybody had to go to church. No, no, no. God said, no, I'm going to call you into the kingdom for such a time as this, where Sunday is Sunday, fun day, turn up day, and you're going to be an option of many. So therefore, serve me. Don't serve your ego. Because my ego says, well, everybody, it don't represent my People who I say, you know, okay. God's like, okay, who who you serving? Man? You looking for the applause of men? Or you want to hear, well done, my good and faithful servant? Amen. So you understand your call. Second thing you got to understand, uh, besides the call, is your character. Tell me what makes you valuable. James 1 and 22 says, be doers of the word, not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. For anyone's a hearer of the word, not a doer. It's like a man observing his natural face in a mirror. For observes himself, goes away, comes back. Who is that fine young man in that mirror? <laughs> Some of y'all missed it. Some of y'all like, who is it? <laughs> I was role-playing with myself. <laughs> Y'all write notes. Y'all didn't see me. Look at the mirror. I went away, and I came back to the mirror. Like, <laughs> it says, for observes himself, goes away, and immediately forgets what kind of man he was. But he looks into the perfect law of liberty and continues in it, and is not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work. This one will be blessed in what he does. So understand this, trials and tribulations build character while success reveals character. <laughs> y'all a trip. Ooh, y'all just so demonstrative and just, you know, listen, I don't, I don't be knowing if y'all like really getting with me or that's just like a cultural thing that you do. Because you feel obligated. Mmm. Ah. Ooh. This ain't the fireworks display. <laughs> so, pressure. Deaconess Young. Pressure. Builds. Character. But when I have success, Kaylee, it reveals my true character. 
You want to know who a person really is? Let them get a little something. You know, when, when, you, when you were single, you were a single bum. You know, and now you, you, you know, you got your little, little lady, got your stable job. You know, you not only, you don't have a hoopty no more. You know, you got a car that will run, you know, and. <laughs> you know, now you can't tell, can't nobody tell you nothing. I mean, you walk around here like you God's gift. You know, and I'm like, okay, but but when you were asking for rides, you was a whole different person. You know, you were volunteering around here, you know, but all of a sudden now you 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 got something of your own and now you don't have time for the things of God. See, understand this money and success makes you more of who you really are. That's right. That's right. So if you were a butthole with, and broke, you're going to come an extreme butthole when you get some money. It just reveals the true you. So your character, your character is important. Your character, you got to be a doer, not just a... A hearer. The third thing, the third thing, so you got your call, your character. The third thing that adds value to you is your conduct. Second Timothy says in chapter two, verse three, you therefore must endure hardship as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No one engaged in warfare entangles himself with affairs of this life that he may please him who enlisted him as a soldier. So we got to have a sense of urgency, and there should be an alarm in our spirits. we got to stay focused on being about our Father's business. We must be a people that can war, worship, and work all at the same time. Which means you got to check in and get your orders, then go out and execute. What's your conduct like? Are you always AWOL? Which means we never know where you are. Listen, there's some of you, when you sign up or when you, when you um, go into PCO to um, say that you're going to be on the schedule to serve, some of you, we know that's a lie. So, so we always have a backup for you, even though we don't put it on the schedule. Because we know your conduct. Right. Are y'all quiet now? Because your, your reputation precedes you. Yeah. Don't matter what you say. What's your, con- your conduct says, they ain't going to show up. Listen, we, can, we, 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 we have running jokes. And some of y'all don't even know you're the, you're the, you're the source of my comedy sometimes. <laughs> like it's raining. You know they ain't going to be here. No, nah, they on the schedule. I don't care what the schedule say. Sun is out. It's a bright, sunshiny day. They ain't going to be here. No, they said they're going to be here. They signed up. I don't care what they say. They ain't going to be here. It's dark outside. <laughs> they said they're going to be here. I don't care what they said. They ain't going to be here. It's morning time. They said they're going to be here. They ain't going to be here. They ain't never here. And then when you do show up, I'm shocked. We're, we're, and you sit there and be like, why is, it, why is it so awkward when you walk in? Because everybody in a state of shock. <laughs> like, you here. Man, we thought you had disappeared off the face of the earth. We didn't even know. Who, who said that? <laughs> Your conduct said that. See, you wonder why people ask you stuff, and they ask you stuff because your conduct sends a message. I don't see it's quiet. Let me get let me get this last seat so I can go get some rest before the second service. So your call, your character, your conduct. The last C is your commitment. James 1 and 2 says, 
My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. But let patience have its perfect work, that you may be perfect, complete, and lacking nothing. Um, this word patience, um, some, some translations, it refers to it in the feminine gender. Uh, let patience have her perfect work because only a woman has the ability to give birth to something. Right, right, right. I know I may lose some streamers right now. Only a woman has the biological ability to give birth to something. I don't matter what you've gotten clipped, snipped, tucked, and folded. You do not have the ability to reproduce. I don't care how much you change the external parts of your body. It don't matter. You still do not have ovaries. So therefore, only a woman can give birth to something. So it says that trials test my faith and the testing of my faith gives birth to patience. Amen. And once I've given birth to patience, it, has, it says, let patience have its perfect work that I may be perfect and complete and lacking nothing. This word perfect is the Greek word teleos. It means to be mature. Right. Right. So it says that trials produces or gives birth to patience and then I let patience have its work over time and it helps me to grow up and mature and no longer be childish in my faith. Right, right, right. Good, Chad. Your helper. So the season is producing something. That's why, listen, y'all be going through rough stuff for dumb reasons. Because you don't learn nothing. You go through a rough season and you still just as dumb and stupid as you were before the, before, before the rough season started. You go, you know, so I'm going to write a new book, Rough Season for Dummies. <laughs> Listen, you got a bust lip and a bloody nose and sitting out here like, I, 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 I still don't know what, what's going on. Bob, weave. Why you keep getting hit by the same punch? The devil tells you, I'm about to punch you in your nose. <laughs> and you stand there like, <laughs> move, fool. Why you keep standing there? Uh, pastor, pray for me. The enemy hacking me. Oh. <laughs> I'm like, step to the right. <laughs> Why? <laughs> oh. <laughs> no. <laughs> you got to understand that this season of pressure, because you got to stay in the process, because the Bible says, Rosie, that when I see him, I will look like him. Yes. So how am I being conformed to the image of the sun without going through sun pressure? Oh, see, you want to look like him, but not be like him. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I want to I look like Jesus. I want to be like Jesus. Because that means I got to suffer. Yeah, what do you think the passion of the Christ was about? That word passion was another Greek word translated suffering. So if he suffered for you, why do you don't think that you're going to suffer? The Bible talk, I showed you two scriptures. It says you shall suffer for my name's sake. You definitely going to suffer. You definitely going to have some pressure. So let me close with this. Let me close with this. Y'all all right? It's summertime. It's summer. Summertime. Summer. Summer. Summertime. 
summertime. <laughs> so in the summer, most people want to relax. It's relax mode. Um, there are some people that are in a shaping and building mode. See, God is trying to prepare us for the greater works he has for us, but we can't keep fighting and resisting the process he's utilizing to get you ready for the work. He's like, I got work for you, but you don't want to get ready for the work. That's like you got a fight coming up, but you don't want to go sparring. You got a fight next week, but you don't want to go running and work out. I'm talking about, yeah, I'm going to eat me some haagen <laughs> You know you got a fight next week. Yeah, I'm going to be ready. You know, and you get in the ring and you all sluggish and get knocked out. God's trying to prepare us. So you got to understand the purpose of the pressure. Understand the pressure, Tina, has a purpose. And I may not fully comprehend it, but the Bible says God is working something out for my good. So I got to understand the purpose of the pressure while also simultaneously learning how to use the problems from the pressure to my advantage to grow in God. Like, I'm not going to be out here taking these L's for no reason. You know, listen, you, 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 you're not going to, you know, for the first three rounds, I may be letting you hit me because I'm trying to fill you out, I'm trying to see what your power like. Yeah. You know, I'm trying to get my rhythm down, I'm trying to get my timing down. You know, I'm like, get off the ropes. I know what I'm doing. I know what I'm doing. I'm trying to see what it's like out here. You know, I got a plan, you know, and for the f- first five rounds, I'm out here getting booed. Yeah. You suck. Boo. <laughs> Get out of the ring. You're horrible. I got a plan. I got a plan. Because in round six, I'm about to turn some things around. Why? You done punch yourself out. I done took your best punches when you had power and when you had energy. Now you ain't got no power and you ain't got no energy. And I've taken your best. Now, let's go, baby. Now, let's, let's get to the championship round. Now, instead of you backing me up, I'm backing you up. And I'm saying, that's a different mentality. Listen, I'm not going to keep getting punched and then just sit here and never punch back. Listen, I'm telling you right now, naturally, I'm telling you right now, you the man of, I'm the man of God. I'm the man of God. I'm the man of God. I'm telling you right now, punch me if you want to. <laughs> Pastor, you're supposed to turn the other cheek. I fulfilled the Bible. <laughs> Bible said, turn the other cheek. I turned it. I'm saved, but I got hands and I'm in the rough. So I told you, I warned you, I'm a little rough. So therefore, don't push me because I'm close to the edge. Ha ha, ha ha, ha. 